Well, I think I think uh, not just labels, but I think Europe as a whole is more receptive to to uh, music, electronic music, and the new the new sounds, the new innovative things. Where is in the United States is so caught up on the commerciality of everything, it's just kind of hard for new stuff to break through. Mm. Yeah. I don't have no time to myself. It's usually <laughs> when I'm home, that's where I am. But um, I travel so much that, you know, even when I'm home, it's like a vacation. Well, the studio is in my house. I lived in the studio. So, yeah, I'm constantly making music. No, I pick, I play new music. I play new stuff all the time. You know, it's got to be good, though. I think it's more marketing now. Yeah. Um, um, you know, and, and a lot of people that are making electronic music now. You're talking about EDM now today. Yeah. Okay. Well, just electronic in yeah. general. Um, our young kids that don't really know too much about, you know, the business and what, you know, and, 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 and I think that the, the, the major industry is kind of trying to exploit the, the naivety of these, these producers. And uh, uh, I think that that's uh, probably one of the, the biggest differences now. I was making uh, uh, what I was what I was influenced by. It was very George Clinton P funk okay. influence. Uh, it definitely had the the, the, the funk uh, uh, rhythm track. Okay. And uh, it just it, it just it, I mean it was nothing really. It, that was my main influence at the time. So anything I was doing at that time definitely had strong. I mean like those claps. You know I made I made a clap <laughs> kick on the on the core of MS10. The guy goes. Funkadelic clap, right. <laughs> and, and uh, so I had all of that in there, you know. And uh, but it was just, uh, you know, it was uh, it was rough and uh, raw, and uh, but it was all electronic, you know. And uh, and so, uh, you know, I, at, at this time I was like a senior in high school, and I, I took a, a class in high school called Future Studies, and. Uh, it was like a part of the history curriculum, you know, like a few, but not, well, basically, yeah, <laughs> social studies, whatever. And uh, uh, so, and in this class, they, uh, the reference, one of the reference book for this class was called uh, Future Shock by Alvin Toffler. Okay. And okay. that was like the reference manual. And, okay. and so, as I'm into this, reading this, you know, taking this class, you know, they, they, they were talking about, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, like the like the term, my first label called Metroplex is term comes from a, a metro complex, which was a term in, in the book that meant two cities that grow so big that they become one metroplex or metro complex, like the Dallas Fort Worth, right. two different cities, but yeah. Right. So they they say that one day Detroit and Chicago is gonna grow so big that it's gonna become a metroplex. Okay. So you know, but you know. So anyway. Uh, so I, I, I started to, you know, uh, fashion my music around these these terms and the stuff that I was reading, because you know when I was doing, like, well, this is the future of what I'm doing, but musical, and uh, and and so uh, I, you know I started calling it techno, basically because of because of the technological revolution that Alvin Toffner was talking about. He later came with another book called The Third Wave, which definitely, you know, <laughs> delves a lot deeper into it. But um, so uh, I was just like, I was just all about, you know, hey, this is the future, you know, and this is, you know, this is technology, this is the technological revolution. So, uh, so that's where, uh, you know, I figured, you know, I was like only like 16, 17 at the time. So I figured I was going to be around for another 20 or 30 years. <laughs> so, you know, I need to do something that was going to stand the test of time. Everything has to start somewhere. In the past, you know, it, you know, I knew I didn't have a lot of uh, options, and I was sort of locked in because of the uh, the primitiveness of, of of the tools. But at the same time, there was always in, something in my head said, "Well, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that." Before memory memory capable capable sense came out. I always wished that I could save my program. So when I turned it off and turned the keyboard back on, it was 
the same program. Well, eventually they came with memory capable, you know, stories. So, I mean, in that case, uh, there's always something that, that isn't quite there uh, in the early days. And, I, and, and the way I see it is that now that you have uh, more, probably more than you need, uh, I really wouldn't have it any other way. Because now the only limitation is what you can, what your own mind can limit. First small mon monophonic synthesizers that were available, you know, to, you know, that had come down in price and were available, you know. I think that they were, you know, just like made. And uh, so I was able to talk her into getting me one. I think we went to Grinnell's one Christmas, or it was my birthday or something, and I was able to talk my grandma into buying me this Korg MS-10. This would have been in, in like the late 70s, this early 80s? This was like 79. 79. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, I mean, I went, I went home and I took this machine, and, and, and the thing about a synthesizer is that you can create just about any sound that you can think of. And uh, so I actually created my own drum kits. And uh, drum, you can make like drum sounds, kicks, snares, hi-hats, and you know, all this is just noise, white noise, depending on how you filter it. And, and you're, uh, you're a kid at this time, how old are you? Uh, like I'm like 17, 16. Oh, okay, 17. So you're, you're good. Yeah, just about to. Did you realize at that moment the impact that decision was going to have on the future? Um, to a certain degree, uh, it was a it was a deliberate thing. I mean, when the album was coming together, and, and in the back of my mind, I'm like somewhere, and maybe that was part of the reason why I didn't the idea didn't sit well with me in the first place because I'm like I'm hearing this the house sound in Detroit, and it's like I've always knew that you know what we were doing was our own thing, and it was about the future. It wasn't about coming behind or, 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 or imitating or, or any other type of thing. And, and when I, you know, the house sound of Detroit sounds like Chicago's little brother. And I'm like, no, we can't be Chicago's little brother. So, so I submitted this track called Techno Music <laughs> to the album. And of course it did exactly what I thought it was gonna do, it made them change the name of the album. Then I would give a, a new artist have your presentation together. It's, it's no, the day has passed where you can just go into the studio and you know make a good record and all of a sudden you're famous. Have your, your image and a presentation and have it ready to, to be seen. I, I definitely suppose that there's a, a, a difference for somebody starting out now than it was for me 15, 20 years ago. Like when I first started, if your record wasn't heard on the radio, if you didn't get some kind of radio support, it was a white. You wasn't, you just it was, it was obscure, you know. But now, uh, artists, you don't need the radio. And you don't even have to have physical records made, you know. You, you, you just you sit, up, sit at home and you shoot the, the MP3 or the WAV file or something to, to one of these companies. And if, you, if the stuff is good, it's gonna, people are gonna download it. So it's, it's easier in that respect. But it's so much competition that you can easily get lost in the shuffle. I never go in with the idea that, hey, I'm just gonna cram this lesson down people's throat and like I, you know, I'm like the authority. I mean, my job is to entertain because, you know, I come from an era where, you know, before the DJ was famous and this big uh, the DJ's got all his acc accolades, all your job was to do is to keep the floor busy or to keep people smiling and happy and dancing. And a lot of that is still in me uh, from when I first started playing. Hi, I'm Todd Roberts. I'm here to here with Juan Atkins, legendary DJ producer. I 
was always a, a really big fan of, of sounds that weren't done or, or if you haven't heard, especially uh, getting away from the conventional acoustic sounds as much as possible. Uh, I, I use a, a sort of a mixture of you know, analog stuff with new digital stuff. A lot of uh, the digital plugins kind of emulate the, the older keyboards or racks or whatever, so it's like it's not that much difference. It just saves you the time and the money to go out and have to buy all of this hardware authentic stuff. So it's, it's really not that much different in mm. terms of the sound. And uh, I mean, of course, you know, I grew up listening to funk music. Uh, and, and so that was definitely a strong influence. Uh, and, uh, but I always wanted to just make music. I always wanted to make records. So it was just no, uh, you know, nothing that, you know, that just, uh, it was no real plan, you know? It just happened. It just happened. Yeah. And, and it's still the same for you or when you're producing now, it just happens with no plan, no concept. It's, it's not, it's no real, it's no real plan. I mean, there is a, uh, I guess a, you could say a subconscious plan uh, where, you know, you think of, of, of a direction or you think of somewhere you want to go, but you never know how it's going to end up when you, when you actually get there. You know, and uh, and that's the way the whole ride has been. I mean, it's like, and and, and that would, if I knew everything that was going to happen, it would take all of the fun out of everything. You know, so so a lot. You know, um, I don't I don't try to know everything. I don't try to 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 make a plan or formula for everything because it, you know it's no fun like that. You know, and, you know I just do what I feel what comes out. You know. I'm not looking to make a house record, a techno record, a jazz record, a blues record, you know, I'm just making what I like, you know.